Ladies and gentlemen, today we have the rematch between Simpson and Taylor. I'm your host, Black Pen Red Pen, and we will be approximating LN2. Let's begin with the Simpsons rule first. And remember, the Simpsons rule is used for what? Yes, to approximate integral. Therefore, we have to come up with an integral so that the value of that integral gives us LN2. And the truth is, Natural log functions came before exponential functions, and also natural log functions was defined to be an integral first. So let me write this down for you guys. Ln2 right here, this is the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over x dx. In fact, this is how the natural log came, with, came up in the first place, historically speaking. Right? Anyway, I think right now it's not hard to see either direction, and once we have the integral, Remember, for the Simpsons rule, we are going to start with an n value, and the n value has to be an even number. So just like last time, I will just say let n equals 4. Therefore, I will also be using the first four non-zero terms of the Taylor series right here to approximate ln2. So that's how we can be fair, right? And as you can see, this integral goes from 1 to 2, so we can calculate delta x right here, which is just going to be 2, oh, 2 minus 1 over 4, and that's going to give us 0 0.25. And now, this right here, by the Simpson, we know this is approximately, you put on the delta x, which is 0 0.25, and then we divide it by 3, and then we multiply by the value of the function at the first x value, so it's just 1. That means I will just have to plug in 1 into 1 over x. So we have 1 over 1. Next, we are going to add 4 times the value of the function at the next x value. The first x value is 1, and the next x value will be 1 plus delta x. Namely, it's going to be 1.25. So I will put 1.25 right here for this x, and we just get 4 times 1 over 1.25 and then continue next we add the coefficient now is 2 and then we times the value of the function at the next x value you pretty much just add 0.25 again and you get 1.5 right here and then just continue and remember it's 4 2 4 2 4 2 keep, they keep alternate depending on how many times you have to go right the next one it will be 4 again and then we times 1 over the next x value, so you just go from 1.5, you add 0.25, we get 1.75. And lastly, if you add 0.25 right here again, you end up with 2. And that's exactly the last x value. So that means this right here is just 1 times the value of the function at the last x value, like this. So it's 1 and 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2. And then the 1 before the last one, it has to be a 4, and then the very last one right here, the coefficient is 1. So this is how you can remember the Simpsons rule. So this is pretty much it. And notice, this right here now, there are just some really basic arithmetic, namely decimal and fractions and addition, of course. So we can calculate it even by hand if you want to. And I'm not going to write down the answer yet, I'll just put down approximately, because let's take a look of the Taylor series approach. Well. I want to come up with a Taylor series uh, for a function, and of course we're talking about ln2. So I would say that the function be lnx, of course. And um, I also need to have a center, right? So perhaps I will just, I cannot pick 0, because ln0 is not defined. So I will just say a is the next easiest value is just a 1. I'm not going to say a is 2 because that's exactly what I'm trying to find out, ln2, right? 1 is so good because ln1 gives us 0, so I'm not using ln of some value, so I'm not cheating at all. And to come up with the Taylor series, yes, we can integrate our best friend, but no, I'm not going to do that. I will be using Taylor only, especially Simpson, we use the integral already. So I'm not going to do any integration with the best friend or maybe the 1 over 1 plus x, the best friend's cousin, anything like that. No, just the Taylor formula, just purely based on the dad, right? So here we go. What we're going to do is draw a table, and then we're going to have some n values. And then remember, 
we are going to get some the nth derivative of the function. And then here is the Taylor formula. And especially if you are prepared for your Cal2 final, you, know, you have to know this. Because this is the way to go for like the Taylor series expansion of some function at like a is equal to phi or something else. And you do it like this way. Anyway, so because we chose a to be 1, so I will just have the nth derivative of the function at 1 and then divided by n factorial. So that's the Taylor formula, and let's go ahead and we want to have the first four non zero terms. So n shall be 1, 2, 3, like this, with a 0 on the top, right here. But here's the problem. The zero's derivative of the function, by convention, is just the original function, so we have ln x. However, when I put 1 right here, we get just 0. So this is not a term technically, right? So I will actually have you know, n up to 4. And you see, we use n is 4 right here for Simpson's rule, and also right here we have n is 4. So I think this is really fair. Anyway, enjoy our derivatives now. Differentiating ln x, we get 1 over x, which is the same as saying x to the negative 1. It's easier to write it this way. And then you differentiate this again, you get negative x to the negative 2. Do it again, you get negative times negative 2, so it becomes positive 2. Right here, right? Bring the 2 to the front, and all that. Bring the negative 2 to the front, and then minus 1, so you have this. Do it again, 2 times negative 3, we get negative 6, x to the negative 4 power. Next, we put 1 into all this x and then divide it by the corresponding factorials. So when you put 1 right here, we just get 1 and then over 1 factorial. And when I put 1 right here, this is negative 1, and we divide it by 2 factorial. And then when we put 1 right here, we get 2, and then divide it by 3 factorial. And lastly, put 1 right here, we get negative 6, and we divide it by 4 factorial, like this. And in fact, we can simplify these numbers real quick because 1 over 1 factorial is just 1, negative 1 over 2 factorial is just negative 1 half, this is uh, saying 3 times 2 times 1, and you can solve the 2, so this is 1 third. And this is uh, saying 4 times 3 times 2. 2 and 3 together, when you multiply, we get 6, so you can cancel out with that. So we get negative 1 over just a 4 on the bottom, like this. So, from here, we can construct our Taylor polynomial. I will tell you guys that natural log of x is approximately equal to, well, this term right here is 0, so I'm not going to put that down. I will start with 1 right here, 1, and we multiply by x minus the a, which is 1 right here, and then to the first power, like this. And we continue. Look at this right here, it's minus 1 half, and we multiply by x minus 1 to the second power. It's always going to be x minus the a value, and you have to raise to the corresponding powers from here. Right? So these are the first two terms, and then I will just put on the next, which is, I'll just write it down, plus one third, x minus one to the third power, and one more right here, negative one over four times x minus one to the fourth power. And of course, this right here keeps on going forever, but I will just stop right here with the first four non zero terms, and this is also called the Taylor polynomial. All right, now, this right here, in fact, it makes sense. Be well, you have to make sense of that. You have to talk about the radius of convergence. And let me just tell you guys that the radius of convergence right here is 1. And the good thing right here is that the interval of convergence, because the center is 1 and the radius of convergence is 1, that means you can go from the center 1. One unit to the left, you get 0. And then one unit to the right, you get 2, like this. And let me tell you, at 0, it's not going to converge. One easy way to see is natural log of 0 is not defined, so it's an open interval right here. But when x is 2, this actually converges. So I will just put down a square bracket to say that we can include the 2 right here. And to really see this, you may want to put this down in the Sigma notation form and look for the coefficient 
sequence and do the ratio test and all that. I will leave that to you, but you know, radius of convergence is one, and this is the interval of convergence, right? All right, so this is what we have. Because two is inside of the interval of convergence, so we can legitimately plug in x equals two right here. So I will just tell you guys, we will plug in x is two into here, and we get natural log of two, which is approximately, well, when you put two into this x, two minus one is just one, one to the power just one, so this is one. So the first is just one. And then if you put two right here, once again, this will be one, so you just have minus one half. And when you put two right here, once again, this will be one, so you have plus one third. And then the last one is just minus one over four. And then I'm gonna stop right here. These are the first four non zero terms. Those, <laughs> those terms are from the Simpsons rule. All right, so right now, I show you guys the Simpsons rule and also the Taylor series with the Taylor polynomial. Leave a comment down below and let me know now which one do you think is closer to the answer LN2. And I just go ahead and do that and wait for you guys right here. Okay, right? we good, huh? All right, so let me tell you guys that the answer to this right here is 0 0.693. And I'll write down more digits for you guys, which is 253 and then 9683, like this. And once you do this, and by the way, both of them are just basic arithmetic. And this is really, really simple, isn't it? It is. When you calculate this, this is 0 0.58, and yes, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And I also put down 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right? 10 decimal places for both of them. And the actual answer to LN2. I shouldn't say actual, I should say the answer from like advanced, like some more powerful calculator or like computer program or so, or from alpha or whatever. This will, uh, this will be 0 0.693.14, but it has nothing to do with pi, okay, just to tell you. And then 718.06. And take a look. Yep, this time, Simpsons is definitely closer to LN2. This right here uh, is not so good, right? So, hopefully you guys all like this video and leave a comment down below and let me know. Right now, I did two comparisons already for the Simpson and also the Taylor. And perhaps you guys can also tell me why didn't I invite Newton to approximate LN2 for me, right? All that stuff. And you guys can let me know if there's anything else that can compare when I use Simpson's rule and also Taylor series, right? Anyway, hopefully you guys all like this video and leave a, and yeah, just subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much. And as always, that's it.